During embryonic development, tissues have to move and reshape, driven by cell-level forces. We have built a computational model of the full fruit fly embryo to explore the links among cell-level forces, cell shapes, and tissue-level movements in one example of morphogenesis, known as germ band retraction. I'm Tyler McCleary, and I'll guide you through our papers, Figure 2, explaining how the model is constrained and fit to experimental data, how it makes testable predictions, and how it links cell geometry to tissue-level stress and morphogenesis. Germ band retraction involves two epithelial tissues, the amnius rosa and the germ band. These two tissues are initially interlocked in U-shapes that uncurl during retraction. To do so, the tug of war between these two tissues must pull differently in different locations, towards the tail end on the embryo's back and towards the head on the embryo's side. Progress through retraction can be tracked using the arcicephalon and telson positions as they move along the length of the embryo. Notably, the amniosterosa cells begin this stage highly elongated and round up during retraction. The distribution of their aspect ratios is plotted through time. The model represents each cell as a finite element constrained to lie on the surface of the embryo. It is matched to experiments by choosing tension values for its cell-cell interfaces that move the telson position appropriately. The archicephalon position and amniostrosis cell aspect ratios are not constrained, but they do closely match experimental data in gray. The time-dependent shape of the germ band amniostrosa boundary is also a good match. In terms of forces, the model predicts that cellular tensions increase during retraction, particularly during the last 20 minutes. Further, these tensions yield tissue-level mechanical stresses that are spatially patterned and anisotropic, that is, greater in one direction. We confirm these predictions through the speed and direction of cell movements after laser dissection experiments. With the model matched to experiments, we can now look under the hood to see how retraction really works. Although tension is uniformly applied around each cell, the cell's elongated shapes result in anisotropic tissue-level stress. You can see this by looking at the density of cell edges around the germ band amniosrosa boundary. Where the two tissues meet on the embryo side, amniosrosa cell junctions are more densely packed, yielding a net pull towards the head. On the embryo's back, the opposite occurs, and denser germ band cell junctions pull towards the tail. Thus, germ band retraction is accomplished by using cell geometry to translate cell level force into patterned tissue level stress. It will be interesting to see if this use of cell geometry is applied widely during development.